you're looking into purgatory here. Like, the backgrounds are black, and it just, it doesn't have that lively feeling like with the Xbox 360. Where the hell are avatars? If they exist, I don't know. Alright, so that's that. Let's go over here. Notifications. Okay, you see pictures of avatars. Uh, let's go over to friends. Now, the friend feed thing is kind of cool. It's sort of like a little message board, or, well, it's, it's more like an activity feed. Where are avatars? Who the hell knows? Let me go to my profile. Notice they got rid of avatars. <laughs> they don't exist anymore. It is cool, though, you could change the color of the tiles on the main screen. You could even do that on the 360, as far as I know. If I want to make it red, orange, brown, blue, green, you can do all that. That is a horrendous color. <laughs> So we're going to change it back while I keep rambling. But yeah, you can change the colors around to fit your liking. I usually go with the greens just because I associate Xbox with green. But overall, the dashboard, I got to hand it to Xbox 360. It's way better. Now, on the Xbox One, it's kind of set up like Windows 8. Everything has uh, like an app that has to pop up. Like, for example, let's say I go to click Skype. It's going to pop this up for a few seconds and then launch Skype. Now, it, oh, go figure. This is another issue with the Xbox. Literally, like, every damn thing that you go to click has an update. 53 megs? Fine, let's update it. And then it'll automatically launch the games and apps application. So, a lot of this, as you've seen right there on the spot, I didn't even plan on that. It's constantly got updates. Everything is built under layer after layer of operating system. It's really tedious. If I want to send a friend request on the Xbox One, I need the from the fewest possible clicks, I can click this because this shows how many friends I have online. I know I'm not not very popular. This guy is online. You gotta click his name and keep in mind you have to have the friends thing, like the application open. You gotta go to send and then well here, I think he's on the 360. I wasn't really paying attention. But then you click uh, one of these options, and then it'll automatically open a snap screen, which is this here. Now, if I had the connect turned on, which I don't because I'm always afraid I'm going to accidentally say something, it'll, um, let's see here, snap TV, snap party. This is what it'll normally do when you send a game invite to people. It'll open up a party, but you'll already be in it. Now that, you know, I wasn't in a party previously, I could choose to start one. So this is the party screen. And this is me up here, and if I had my head, some headphones or some sort of input device plugged in, it would blink green in that circle, and it would indicate that I'm talking. So it's kind of cool, I guess, that you can snap uh, your parties and stuff. It's just, it's really, really restricted. It takes a long time, and God help you if you try to send an invite while you're in the middle of a game. It's something that's very tedious, and it needs to be worked out. Now, there's been a lot of things, oops, I hit the X button by accident, um, that they, they fix via update. Like, for example, now they have uh, 3D support in the settings menu. Let's go over to that. Um, now, if you hit the hold the guide button down to turn off the console, there's a little, like, vibration cue that goes off. So, if you go over here to uh, check out the interface, it's very bland, but it doesn't have to be. It's just a settings menu. If you go to display and sound, you can adjust the screen resolution, bits per pixel, adjust, like, the sound mixer. This is kind of cool here. You can adjust which steps you want to take in order to control your TV or audio video volume, and you could change your, your audio settings. So, it's got all the settings that the 360 had, and then some. So, it does have more settings. It's just kind of hard to get to it. Like, one thing that always bugs me is, okay, I go back to the dashboard by hitting the guide button, as you've noticed. Now, you almost wonder, let's say I go to open games and apps. And then I go back to the dashboard. Now, keep in mind, I have no way of knowing which apps I just idled. So you have to remember, oh, I had the settings menu idled. So these things are all running in the background, and I'm sure it doesn't do much when you're running a game. But it could add up and slow things down. Like I said earlier, if you try to send a friend request when you're in, like, let's say Titanfall, it'll take, like, 30 seconds. It's horrible. But, you know, I guess there's got to be some trade-offs. You get high-resolution graphics, you're talking to people in a party, and you go to send an invite. Just too much for the Xbox, I guess. Who the hell knows? Now, let's start to talk about games. If you're kind of on the fence about spending, well, currently $400 on the console without the Kinect, there aren't really many games right now to drive your purchase. When I got the Xbox One, I got Dead Rising 3, Call of Duty Ghosts as a $10 upgrade, because you can get it on the 360 and then do a little upgrade. Uh, Killer Instinct actually got for free with the promotion, and I got Rise. Rise is currently coming to PC. Peggle 2 is no longer an Xbox exclusive. 
Dead Rising 3 is currently going to PC. Uh, right now, the only games that I can honestly say are only playable on Xbox One, Crimson Dragon, Killer Instinct, and keep going past things. Sorry, four is a five. That's it. And if you're not a racing game fan, and let's say you really couldn't give two shits about Killer Instinct or Crimson Dragon, I mean, honestly, I'm not really much of a racing fan or a fighting game fan. I mean, Killer Instinct is good, but am I going to go out and pay 400 bucks for Killer Instinct? Now, I'm not going to go ahead and talk about PS4 and all their faults since I'm doing an Xbox video, because I'm not, I don't want to sound like I'm pro Sony or pro Microsoft here, because Sony, at least they, when they keep their first parties, they're there, and you know that their first parties to stay, or at least for now, you know, who knows. You know, Killzone, Knack, MLB, the show, Infamous Second Son, they're not going anywhere, but at least you can say that, you know, I bought the PS4 to play Infamous, or I bought the PS4 to play some Killzone. Like, they're not incredible games, but at least they're console games that, I don't know, they sort of sell the system. I, I think Infamous does. If, if that was a launch game, that would have done a much better job at selling the console. But, I mean, currently, we're over 4 million units sold on PS4. Xbox One, this is my main console. The reason I'm doing this video is because I truly care about Xbox One, and I really want them to start keeping exclusives. I know this coming October, we have Sunset Overdrive, and I really hope that they don't lose that exclusive. They lied uh, at Gamescom saying that uh, Rise of the Tomb Raider was going to be exclusive to Xbox One, but that's actually going on to the... Uh, I think it's eventually going to go to PS4 and possibly PC. So, right now, the Xbox One isn't looking too good. I mean, the, as far as the operating system... If I were to give it a number rating, it's really hard to say. Uh, I'd probably give it a 7.5 right now. It, it functions. It's gotten a lot faster. It's more stable. I don't have games constantly crashing to the dashboard um, anymore like I used to. That was a problem that used to occur. Right now, you just need to deal with this work-in-progress OS. And honestly, it's not bad. They have done a lot of improvements, uh, a lot of work with the updates and stuff like achievements. You can snap achievements now and actually check your progress. But notice how long it took just to open this app. Like, I kind of don't ever want to bother going through achievements because it's just too much work. Just everything with the Xbox One is just layer after layer of operating system. And it's very cumbersome. I honestly just wish they they'd maybe code in the Xbox guide because I, I like sending friend requests and invites that way. It was just a lot easier. I do really think the activity feed was important though for the operating system. That was something that the 360 was lacking, but it came at the expense of avatars. All the avatar accessories you might have purchased on 360, it's only available on 360. Um, what I recommend getting the Xbox One, if you're, a, I guess, a big fan of it, uh, this is my main console. I get all my third parties on it, just like I actually just purchased Diablo 3, and I'm about to fire that up pretty soon. If this is your main console, I wouldn't say to shy away from it because games look superior on PS4, because they do a little bit. There's, there's some resolution differentiation um, there, but as far as getting it for first parties, they're not really there yet. Uh, I think if you if you were thinking about it, it's probably a good idea to hold off right now and wait for the games to come out. Like I said, Sunset Overdrive's releasing this October, so maybe that might sell some consoles. But as of it, as it is right now, the 360 is doing way better. I thought the launch games were better, and at least they kept their exclusives. So thanks for watching, and uh, feel free to like and or subscribe to my channel. And I'm definitely going to be doing more impression videos. And uh, hope you liked what I had to say. Have a great day.